Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Hope you're okay today. Thank you so much for being here. I want to talk to you today about something that's near and dear to my heart, something that was a very big part of my life for many years and has empowered me and enabled me in so many unique ways, and that is technology. Now, technology can cause us a lot of stress and uh, worry, but it also can bring us great joy. And I wanted to share with you some ways that I think technology can really bring joy into your life during turbulent times. And we are absolutely going through turbulent times at the moment. And of course, I, I think I don't need to say to everyone that you're getting a lot of uh, use of your technology. You're, you're watching movies and videos and, um, and all kinds of different applications on your phone. We are really, in a way, very fortunate that that is, is available to us right now. And I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things, you know, some of the apps that are available and uh, in different categories to entertain you, to calm you, to, to just help you get through this time. It's a very powerful tool. And for me, technology has empowered me in so many ways, just for example, doing videos, doing the website 60 and Me, and all the things that have developed over the seven years we've, we've been here, um, you know, to produce content for you. So um, this article was inspired, or this conversation was inspired by an article by Judy Jacobs, who's one of our amazing bloggers. And she is in the technology business. So she knows everything there is to know about the latest and greatest. And I was happy that when she wrote this article, she started with um, technology to help with a calming, um, have a calming influence. Things that we can do using technology to help us meditate, reflect and calm ourselves because it's a very fearful situation at the moment, as many of you know. And um, you know, it's just a time when we need all the resources uh, to bring us um, you know, to a calm place. And it's going to be very, it's very useful as well. That cannot hurt our health and well-being. So meditation and reflection. There are apps um, for your phone, things like um, Headspace, uh, Gaia, which is a, it's actually an amazing channel, Gaia. It's got all kinds of um, documentaries and stories and articles about um, spiritual things, some of them, about reflective psychology, sociology, amazing uh, spectrum. And then also Calm, which is a, um, a calming uh, app that you can use if you need to, to have a little help getting to sleep. It's very, they, uh, there's story, re, uh, stories being read in nice, beautiful, soft voices, and they calm you down. And they're just a, a pract they're practices that help you get get into a ritual, a ritual of, of uh, re reflective behavior. Um, now also there's Happier, I hadn't heard of this one, which is an app that uh, where you reflect and share personal experiences, happy moments in your life. It's called Happier. So time to focus and appreciate the great things and good things in, in life. And there's lots of other um, uh, apps these days which are designed to guide you through meditation and calm your nerves. Maybe you've got some that you'd like to share with us. I'd love to know the ones that you are, are using. It's fun when it matches your style. Another way that technology is wonderful is it can actually help you to find ways to help other people. And we've talked about this in a couple of other videos about um, you know providing uh, volunteer virtual volunteering, be able to uh, do mentoring, help other women to um, get out get through this situation, and not just this, but just in life issues because. On top of everything that's going on with the uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19 um, um, ep epidemic, we've actually also dealing with just life, <laughs> with things that have been maybe were there before and then are going to continue after. So you can, technology provides a really cool pathway to find community-based activities. And there are platforms like Go Volunteer, which are not so much uh, virtual um, volunteering, but just things you can do when all this is passed and you can start giving back to society. And there's lots of inspiration, even if you just go there and look at the different list of things that are where people are looking for help. It just helps you to have an empathy for the world, I think. It's quite remarkable. And um, GoFundMe, of course, is uh, something that you, you might be following. People use GoFundMe.com for all kinds of requests for help. Sometimes if there's been an accident or a bereavement or um, someone just needs some financial assistance to get through a, a tough situation, they will, some, someone may open uh, a GoFundMe account for them and you can provide just, you know, whatever support you can. It's very, very powerful. But those are apps that help you like go, go volunteer and GoFundMe. That's technology taking you to a helpful place. 
There's also uh, lots and lots of apps and, and, and uh, things online for joyful living, especially eating, healthy eating. There's all kinds of uh, recipes. If you go online to YouTube, you can learn how to make all kinds of wonderful things. If you, like me, forgot to buy yeast and you're trying to make bread, there's recipes for how to do, um, you know, yeast, non-rising breads and, and flat breads and just things that you never thought you ever needed to know <laughs> are there on YouTube. It's amazing. And there are some uh, really cool apps that help you to stay healthy by creating habits. Uh, lots of helpful help with uh, calorie counting. And there's one called Streaks and Tally, which are um, apps that help you to set goals, like timers, like, did you achieve this goal that you wanted to set for yourself? It's like a reminder of, the, of these uh, habit-forming milestones. So that's those are two that you might want to check out. They're really cool. I've never looked at either of those. I must do that. Um, there's also joy that you can be um, enjoying in, in life through technology with music. Honestly, music right now is just so accessible. I just have been amazed at the number of um, really well-known artists and uh, you know famous people who have great talent who are now getting up and doing live shows from their living room, doing um, the music, the uh, Metropolitan, the Met in New York is, uh, is New York is doing uh, live streaming opera and uh, you know people like uh, Keith Urban if you're into sort of country pop music. Um, I know Andrea Bocelli has been singing on his I think his Facebook. Page page or Instagram, but it's just uh, people are doing amazing music online. So that's just one stream. But then in addition to that, you've of course got music sources like Spotify, uh, Pandora and uh, Apple Music which are subscription uh, services that you can sign up and you can do it kind of any way you like. You can do, you know, monthly fee or sign up for a year. And uh, of course, you've got Alexa, uh, the Amazon, you know, play me uh, Andrea Bocelli and you get a whole, you know, series of uh, his beautiful songs. But music for me brings me such joy. I just sometimes at night, particularly when I've finished working and I'm kind of calmed down and you know, breathing. Um, I'll just listen to music and it just really fills my heart with um, calm. So technology has been a huge asset to us when it comes to experiencing the arts and culture. And that's not just um, music. You can get joy through art. Uh, I, I was looking at an article yesterday with, I think, 15 museums around the world that are basically open. They've got like, you know, walking tours even like the National Gallery in London and the British Museum, they don't, they have like a walking tour, 360 um, panoramics, so just amazing the stuff that you can do now uh, online. So technology can bring joy in your life in so many ways. There may be a little bit of a learning curve. You may think, oh my God, I don't know how to do that, or it's frustrating if you don't get the results you want. But, or you may have a security issue. There's lots of reasons that people are hesitant about technology. But if you can, you know, get over that, use the security settings really well on all your social uh, accounts and just explore, you know, virtual anything. And I bet there's gar virtual gardening sessions and virtual learning the violin and learning the piano. There's something, honestly, for every single person. And you can just do on your phone or on your laptop all kinds of um, things that enrich you and bring joy to your life. And especially, especially during this turbulent time in our lives, we will look back at this time and think, I'm so glad I took that time to learn how to play the piano, something I've always wanted to do, but I just didn't make time. Or I learned how to make bread, <laughs> or I learned how to discover new music, or how to volunteer and be helpful in my community, or, you know, learn how to meditate. There are lots of different joyful ways you can use technology. So thank you, Judy, for this really lovely, inspiring article. I really I was appreciative of the links you gave and check out Judy's article to get all the different um, comment, comments and or content. Very, very useful. And I'd just like to know, and what do you use technology for? How are you using it right now during this situation when you're home alone or self-isolating, social distancing? What are you using technology for? Let's have a conversation. Leave leave your comments below and just join each other, chat, get to know one another. We're here for, for one another on 60 and Me, and I appreciate you being here so much. But uh, do have a wonderful day wherever you are and we'll talk again soon. Just stay safe and be well. Bye-bye for now.